we learned about objects in Python is another uh, important aspect that we should talk about right after objects, and that's variables. What a variable is, is just a name tag uh, that represents an object in memory. So <clears throat> I'm going to draw you a nice little picture with my amazing drawing skills. We got our object over here. We saw this in a previous tutorial. And our object is the integer 4. All right. And then we have a variable name over here. We're just going to say it's A for now. And all it does is point. It holds no information uh, about the object. It's just a pointer. It's a name tag. Or like a road sign that says, hey, go this way. You know what I mean? Um, so it's just pointing to an object in memory. We could also have another variable represent the same object. And it just points over here to 4. We have numerous... Um, variables that represent that. Uh, we can also reassign our variables. So say we have a string over here and this string says hi. Alright. We can just reassign A to represent hi. Now if you're coming from another programming language like Swift, um, we couldn't do an integer to a string for A because they're type specific variables. But in Python, we can do that kind of thing. So you really don't have to worry about what type your your variables are because your type information lives with your object, not with the variable. Like I said, variables don't hold any information. So let's go ahead and get rid of that, and let's start creating some variables. <clears throat> to create a variable, we need to give it a name. So I'm going to give it a name var for variable. Then I'm going to sign it using the equal sign. So the equal sign assigns is called an assignment operator, it assigns it to an object. And we'll just use our uh, number four object here. Hit return, now the variable var is pointing to the number four object and the assignment operator makes that happen. All right. So now we can call var like that and it prints out the object. And we can print the uh, object via the variable var and it prints out four. Um, <clears throat> now we can reassign var. We can say var now equals five. All right, and we call it, and you see it equals five. Pretty simple, right? Um, now there's a couple of guidelines that you should probably follow when naming variables. One would be make sure your variable's name is a good representation of the object. For example, say we have a list of students, all right? So I'm gonna name my variable students, and I'm gonna create a list of students. And this is how we create a list in Python, by the way. And I'm gonna say Joe, Bob, and Kim, all right? These are my students I have for my course. Now, uh, the variable app represents a list of students, objects, each one of these is an object. They're objects, and then this whole thing's an object. So there's four objects, actually. And students represents the whole one, the big one. All right, and then the list actually points to each one of these smaller objects inside. All right, with that being said, <clears throat> now I have a variable that represents students. And like I was saying, we want this to have meaning. So when you write your programs, you know what it's actually representing versus going, what the heck does var rep represent? So like if we did var to represent this list here, um, it, we wouldn't know what, what it meant. So like if I did var students like that and called var, that's going to print out my list. Now I don't know what var means. All right. So students is a better option to use, okay? Uh, what else I want to talk about? There's some, um, oh, the naming convention I wanted to talk about. Say we had uh, two words we want to use for a variable. The students, if we want to use that as a variable, and we try to assign that to, uh, we'll just give it a string here, Bob. Alright, hit return. We get a syntax error. We can't use a space in a variable all right so the proper way to do this would be the students like that equals bob 
hit return. Now this represents Bob. Like that. That works, alright? Another way we could write it was like students, the students. Or we could write it like students. But I think the last two ways I showed you are a little bit more difficult to read. I think the underscore itself makes it easier to read. Um, we also can't start a variable out with a number. So I can't do like one student equals Joe. All right, it's an in invalid syntax. So we can't start it out with a number. But we can have a number like student one equal to Joe. Like that, that works, but we can't start with a number. Um, another thing we can't do is, uh, th or I'm sorry, some things we need to avoid naming our variables. And for example, they would be like package names, module names, class names, exception names, global variable names, function names, function arguments, method arguments, method names, instance variables, and constants. And you're probably saying, what the heck did he just read off? Don't focus too much on it. Um, you will learn when you're learning Python um, what the build-in functions are, uh, what global variables are, stuff like that. You'll you'll start to gain ideas of what which ones we can't use. But I'm going to give you an example of one right now. Uh, what would happen if we did try to use a, a function name, for example? Say we want to use print, and I said print equal to two. Uh, All right, three. It's dark in here, and I can't. My fat fingers. Anyway, um, so print is equal to three. Now, if I want to go and print something, and I used a print function that we seen earlier, print, and I say print three. Up uh, again, a type error. Int object is not called. Okay, so you might think to yourself, uh, inner int object's not callable, so I can't print three in here. Okay, let's try something different. Print um, we'll make three a string and let's try that. Up uh, in objects not callable. Well in theory what I just did was break my uh, my interpreter for now because it's saying hey print's a variable. You made it print a variable up here. Now the print function is not working. So basically I burp I can't there's nothing I can do now unless I all I can do is restart my interpreter and then it will go back to functioning properly so let's go ahead and do that control D that kills it and then we do Python 3 and now if I do print 3 boom there we go it's back working again but just so you know that's an example of why we can't use function names because that will end up breaking things. Um, oh yeah, another thing I want to talk about variables. So we have dog and assign it. It must have a object associated with it. So if I do dog, I'm going to get an about syntax because it's not assigned to an object. I could do something like this. So like if I didn't know dog's name, and that's what this variable is supposed to represent, I could do dog and I can do an empty string like this. And now it works. I don't get an invalid syntax. Uh, let me see if there's anything else I want to discuss. Now I think that's pretty much it for variables. Um, just remember, when you create a variable, you need the name, the assignment operator, and the object. All right. Uh, this is an empty string object, so it's just an empty string. Um, another important thing to remember is be careful with what you're naming it. If you know, for example, print is a uh, function, then it's probably not a good idea to name it print because it's going to break something along the line. Uh, that's about it. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment on our form. Uh, I'll be able to help you out. If not, I'll see you in the next tutorial uh, where we start talking about uh, data types in Python. So I'll see you then. Have a nice night.